why, how does he get it through? Why does he get the support from other senators? Why don't they just tell Florida to go shove it? How does he get a lot of Midwesterners to support subsidies and tariffs for sugar? Why do you think people in the Midwest love Marco Rubio's subsidies, love Marco Rubio's tariffs? Let's see if you can figure this one out. This is, this is where economics gets complex. Government economics gets complex. Who has an incentive to keep sugar prices really, really high? Corn farmers. Corn farmers. Why? What does corn have to do with sugar? Well, corn is a substitute for sugar. Right? Beets is too, too small of an industry. But corn is massive. What do we use in Coca-Cola? What do we use in Coca-Cola? We use high fructose corn syrup. Indeed, most places that serve, don't serve sugar, particularly in soft drinks, it's corn syrup. Corn syrup. So corn farmers want sugar to be expensive because they want to be able to sell you corn syrup. Imagine if we did away with the tariffs and the subsidies. Sugar farmers in Florida couldn't compete. They would go out of business. The market would be flooded by cheap sugar from Brazil. Corn farmers would then have to stop producing corn. They actually, actually use their land to produce something we need and want. This is, by the way, why people buy Coca-Cola from Mexico, because Coca-Cola in Mexico tastes better because it has real sugar in it. Now, I don't, drink, I don't eat sugar. I don't do corn syrup. I, I stay away from all, as much as I can, from sugar generally. But obviously, our culture doesn't. But so you see how intricate this is, right? Corn farmers support sugar subsidies and tariffs. And they form a coalition. They get stuff passed in Congress. Voodoo economics. Because none of this is good. None of this is beneficial. None of this is economic. All of this is distorted, perverted, destructive, reduces the quality and standard of life of Americans. It's bad for us as individuals. Nobody cares. All we want to do is overlay more. Keep building. Keep making. Grow the government. Give them more power. Because they're so good at what they do. They're so good at using the power they have. Let's give them more. Somebody says, anybody beside you on saying this about Florida sugar? People have in the past. I, I didn't make this up. I, you know, I, I've read it. I've researched it. It's, it's, you know, you can find this. It, why do you think the Midwest supports ethanol in, in, in fuel, even though ethanol fuel is, like, stupid, right? It makes no sense. Well, again, corn farmers. Ethanol is made from corn. But it's not, look it up. Look up sugar, tariffs, subsidies. This has been said before, but nobody cares. I, I, yeah, if somebody says John Stossel has talked about it. Yeah, all this stuff is known. It doesn't matter. We can do a million shows every single day showing how the government screws up economically all the time. It doesn't matter. People will say, what's the alternative? Who's going to manage stuff? We can't trust the market. That's selfish, self-interested businessman. Somebody has to be oversight. And who's going to help the poor? If the government doesn't do it, who's going to do it? And we know we have to help the poor. See, that's yeah, inefficient, but it's better to help them inefficiently than not help them at all. Yeah, yeah Daniel says the only reason ethanol blended gasoline is cheaper is because it's subsidized. And, and there's no reason to have ethanol in gasoline. It, it, it makes no sense. Uh, they showed in California that the blend in California, which has a lot of ethanol in it, is actually more polluting with the ethanol than without. 
It might emit less carbon, but it, produ it emits something else that's far more deadly and bad for you. All right, and then finally, it is the myth that Republicans and Democrats share that the way to get the economy going, the way to generate economic growth, the way to get more production, the way to get people back to work is for the government to spend, spend, spend. Coming out of COVID, the way to get out of COVID is for the government to spend, spend, spend. Where's the money going to come from? Well, print it. What difference does it make? We'll borrow it. It doesn't matter. Interest rates are zero, so it doesn't matter. And we'll just... We'll just pay. We'll just pay people to compensate them, get them out of poverty, to get them into jobs. It's never worked. It didn't work during the Great Depression. You can go back and look at Great Depression. And you can see that it, it just doesn't, it didn't work. Unemployment in 1938 was about the same as it was in 1933. It dipped a little bit and then went right back up because government spending doesn't create economic activity. It doesn't create jobs. It doesn't create well-being. It doesn't create wealth. It hasn't worked in Japan that for the last 30 years has been trying desperately to borrow money and distribute it so that they can stimulate the economy. The economy is never stimulated. It just grows at the same old, boring, slow rate. And it doesn't matter to anybody. It doesn't matter. It's all they can think of. Whenever there's a problem, the only way modern economists know how to think about the problem is to say, what can government do? What can we do? How can we... The idea that the best way to deal with the problem is to get government out of the way, to reduce the barriers, to stop the spending, to return the money to the private economy. Nobody, nobody seems to... Consider that. It's out of the economic lexicon. It's not, doesn't exist. Throw more money at children. Throw more money at sugar farmers. Throw more money at just everybody. Just give everybody a $1,400 check. At small businesses, at restaurants, and then raise the minimum wage so the restaurant loses money on their labor. It's just, it's a mishmash of complete nonsensical garbage. It makes no economic sense. And it, there's no economic science behind it. Yes, the graphs and their, their equations and their you know, algorithms and so on, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't stand up to reality. It doesn't stand up to the test of time. And nobody wants to learn because the last thing, last thing anybody wants is to consider the possibility. Is to consider the possibility that government is not the solution. All of them, left and right, want more government. They want government to have more power. They want to have government have more control. Maybe they want to control different things, but they want to have government have more control over your life in one way or another. Conservative nationalists now want industrial policy. They want to make sure it's built and bought in America. And all of it, is, is, is inspired by a certain attitude to epistemology, right? a certain epistemological framework. They all have rejected reason. They've all rejected the evidence of the senses. They've all rejected reality. Modern economics, when it comes to the state, 
is whim worshipping. It's wishing. It's like a religion. Indeed, it is a religion. Because all it involves is praying. I'm praying that poverty rates go down. Because there's no science. There's no scientific method. All they're doing is putting their wishes, their whims, their prayers, their desires. And you see, the American people are buying into this. Who can object to lowering poverty? That didn't work last time. We'll try it again. It's the same attitude towards socialism. But socialism is noble. Socialism is good. What has to be fundamental is the very function of the state. The very nature of the state needs to be questioned. Until we're willing to ask the question, why do we have government? What do we have government for? What is government actually good at? What's its purpose? We're not going to get good government. And it doesn't matter who you vote for. Somebody asked in the, in the, in the question, how do you get separation of state from economics? You get it by defining government as an agency whose sole responsibility is the protection of individual rights. And therefore, which has no... No responsibility, no involvement, no relevance in the field of economics, in the field of voluntary interaction between human beings. Unless this fraud or force, the government stays out. It helps define and then protect property rights, but that's it. But that requires a completely complete and utter fundamental basic change in our view of government. And this is why the people who think if we only burnt it down today, a better world would rise up. No. It's not about burning the world down. It's about changing people's ideas. It's about changing their attitudes. It's about shifting their attitudes away from relying on government to do everything for them, including decide what should be in their soft drinks. So the battle is not economic. The battle is about the very nature of government and the very role and purpose of government. And until we reject unlimited government, until we reject the idea of government's responsibility to guide our lives in every aspect of our lives, or to guide our lives in anything, we will have voodoo economics because all these economists are being paid to justify a growing state to justify more state intervention, to justify higher tariffs, to justify buy American, to justify a war in poverty. That's their profession. If poverty actually went away, what would they do? They'd redefine it. They'd create it. Which arguably they are anyway. These are, yeah, I like that, Christopher. These are the witch doctors of economics. It's all mystical. And the Bidens and the Trumps and the Marco Rubios and the Elizabeth Warrens of the world <coughs> are their attillers. <coughs> They're the ones who wield the sword. They're the ones who use the force. But they couldn't do it without the witch doctors pretending to all of us that this is the cure. This will work. This time my voodoo will actually have an impact. We've got the voodoos, we, I mean, sorry, we've got the witch doctors, and we've got the tillers. And we, we, all of us, anybody who's productive, anybody who's working for a living, making a decent living, is the sacrificial animal. What we want, our lives, our desires, our values, our thoughts, don't matter one iota. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.
All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to hundred. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this, uh, and, and you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.